Hello and welcome to another presentation of Film Academy Projects. Um, I'm happy you're here. Welcome. Uh, this uh, next session is uh, a very interesting one because it shows you that at Film Academy we don't only make films, but we also uh, it's also about um, uh, transmedia and games. Um, the course of studies at Film Academy uh, called Interactive Media is where you can specialize on transmedia and games, either uh, to become a director in this, in this area or a producer or a transmedia and games artist. Um, I want to point you to those two cards. Uh, on this one, which you find on your seats, you can uh, find uh, some information about um, other things, uh, other presentations, screenings, installations uh, here at FMX. Um, especially uh, the interactive media installations, which were made by some of these uh, students. You can find uh, in the, on the marketplace um, the, uh, the game Perfect Woman. Um, on the, above the marketplace, on the List Gallery, you can find the project Dislocate. Um, some people don't even know it. There is a space above the marketplace, so go there and check it out. It's really worth it. And, uh, the, uh, and sprout the word... Um, which is spread uh, around <laughs> on, the, on the first floor uh, of FMX. Um, so, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, um, you can find this information on, on this card. Um, you can still apply for the Interactive Media Studies, which is a two and a half year program at the Institute of Animation at Film Academy, for this autumn autumn 2014, until the 5th of May. Um, so if there are some people among you who um, consider studying at Film Academy, this is uh, your chance now. You can still apply till the 5th of May, so spread the word. And um, now I stop talking, and we start with our first speakers, um, Marcel Dura and Sabrina Proske, who will present you their um, interactive graphic novel, Shift. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> and welcome everybody to our presentation of Shift Tales of the Sentinels. My name is Sabrina Proske, I've been a producer of this project, and this is Marcel Dura, the content director and the student who made his diploma with it. Yes. And um, what is actually Shift all about? Shift is an interactive graphic novel, but because of the fact that time is running fast and we have so many projects here to present and so few time, uh, please show us the trailer. There, is, there should be sound. Parallel to our world, there is another, where the emotions of we humans have their own lives and agendas. Up to now, those monsters called spirits live peacefully side by side with us, but the balance has been destroyed. Negative thoughts and fears have flocked together. These spirits weigh darkly upon the mind. Their ever-growing power feeds their hunger for our souls and fills them with a boldness to tear more of our world into their darkness. The whole world is at stake. The only souls who can face them are the Sentinels, humans who are able to shift between these two worlds and guard the balance of emotions. But this time, the dark force seems invincible. There is only one hope, Adam. But the 17-year-old teenager doesn't know that he is a sentinel yet. And when he finds out, he will face a terrible choice. If Adam fights for peace, he will slowly lose his existence in our world. Loved ones will forget him. Memories of him will fade away. Is Adam willing to give up his family and his secret love and accept his destiny to save both worlds? With the help of your tablet, you can join Adam on his journey. Explore the new world and find hidden content. 
discover the secrets of the interactive comic series Shift Tales of the Sentinels. Follow us on Facebook and download the app now. Good, I don't think we need the credits right now because they are pretty long. Yes, um, shift what we've done and why we've done it. Um, for me personally, um, I'm a huge uh, comic mark. I'm a huge comic geek. I've been that all my whole life, as long as I can remember. And uh, therefore, for me, the opportunity in the transmedia class to not do a film, but to look at other medias and uh, take a look how they can evolve with the new technology we got uh, was for me a re huge opportunity and a huge step and that's why I've done an interactive graphic novel and um, from what really interested me the most in comics was uh, to see that those comic stories are connected in some way and they have a bigger picture to it and it's a bigger world behind it and uh, you can dive into that experience by comics and uh, we wanted to really make possible that you can dive in. So we combined, um, we have a dynamic camera. You can choose the perspective in every single panel. Um, we have two parallel storylines and, well, more is to come. And, um, yes. In the future, we still are working right now on uh, our prototype that will be hopefully uh, the summer finished. And um, we are looking for financing because uh, being a student is an awesome thing, especially at the film academy, because uh, you can work on such projects, but outside you have to finance it somehow. And that's the biggest task we got right now. Yes, so um, if you got further questions, you can find us downstairs at the exhibition hall. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcel and Sabrina. So the next two speakers, uh, Marie Velasov and Jana Schell, will tell us a little bit about what is really behind international politics. Um, so please welcome Marie and Jana, who will present their project, Ceci n'est pas une caméra. Hello, everybody. We present to you our game, Cecine Par und Camera. Okay. Um, it's an online point and click game, and we started with the game in October 2013 when the spying scandal came up with the NSA and Barack Obama spying on the cell phone of Angela Merkel. And Angela, the German Chancellor, just said, spying between friends, that's just not done. But obviously he had a reason to do it. And we had long discussions about this, what was the reason why he wanted to know what was going on on her phone. And um, we came to, to the conclusion that he has to be in love with her. Um, and if you are in love with somebody, you try to get as many information about the person as possible because you want to impress him or her. So this is what, is, uh, what our game is about. It's about a man who's totally in love and tries to find the perfect present for a woman. So our game starts with Barak flying with his rocket around the Earth and he collects as many uh, information as possible. And everywhere where he's find out something, the landscape is colored in beautiful prism colors. Um, everywhere except for Germany. Too bad for poor Barack because Angela is living in Germany. So he decides um, to find out what she's doing the whole day. And he doesn't want to do this on his own, but uh, he has some little friends, the spy eyes, and he wants to send them into her office. But he has to do it secretly because 
Angela wouldn't be that happy if she finds out. So he um, hides cameras in, in these little eyes and um, by a remote control he wants to send them into her office and see what she does during the day. And for this he needs uh, to find a way to bring them down to the office secretly and his solution is to hide the presents into uh, harmless things like plants and a lamp and some, some sweets. All right, and then, um, yeah, he has um, all these objects on, and on his second task, he puts them all into um, really nice gifts and um, flies to Germany and lands with his rocket on the Bundestag where um, Angela is already waiting for him. So he um, gives his presence to her and then flies back to space. And Angela is a little bit naive. She takes all the presents and um, walks straight to her office and puts all these presents um, around, around her in her room. So you can see her there in her office uh, surrounded by Obama's gifts. And all these um, objects have eyes, and Obama can see through these eyes um, into Angela's office. And now Obama can see every corner of her office and can see everything she's doing all day. So um, he managed um, his first task to spy on her, and now the big question is um, if he will win her heart. And yeah, you can find out on our website and play the game. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, our next speaker, uh, Jonas Kirchner, will present his uh, thesis project, uh, Five Minutes. Hello everybody, my name is Jonas Kirchner and I want to present you my diploma project Five Minutes, a transmedia campaign for the brand G-Shock. Okay. If the world is on the brick of destruction, you need something you can hold on to. You need products you can rely on. Products that overcome major challenges. Products like the G-Shock. <laughs> but is G-Shock even robust enough to survive a zombie apocalypse? Um, the core... The core target group of G-Shock is male between 14 and 55 years old and has the necessary purchasing power. We asked nearly 100 people from this target group about their leisure activities, their media usage and their genre preferences and their brand image of G-Shock. Um, most of the respondents known G-Shock and described the brand as robust and reliable but not very innovative and exciting. In addition, three out of four of the res respondents are interested in games and like to watch movies. So the target group of G-Shock love to be entertained. During their spare time, the respondents especially use the internet and spend a lot of time on computers on s or smartphones. Over 80% use both simultaneously. In our transmedia campaign for the brand G-Shock, we have decided to create an interactive branded short. After being injured during a fight with a zombie, our main character, John, isn't sure whether he is infected or not. Only five minutes remain for John to figure out his fate or protect the life of his daughter, Mia, who is with him in the same apartment. As you can see in the interactive film experience, narrative storytelling and gaming elements are combined into one. The application gives the user the ability to take part in the action using their smartphones. So, okay. In addition to the interactive branded short, the target group, uh, target group should 
also be addressed through other channels. And the analysis shows that the respondents are also interested in social media and outdoor activities. So we created a social media campaign, Kill Your Zombie. The aim was to link the issue of time pressure and zombies with the real life of the target groups. The core idea, kill your inner zombie and enjoy every second of your life. First of all, we wanted to build a community. For this purpose, we organized a professional photo shooting in the middle of Stuttgart during the annual zombie walk. The participants were photographed in the front of a green screen and placed in a zombie apocalypse setting. The pictures were published on our Facebook page, Kill Your Zombie. The result, over 200 new likes and a high coverage through tagging other peoples. Um, during Christmas, we introduced the topic zombification. A Christmas zombie and four first aiders dressed in protective suits ran through the Christmas market. They offered homemade anti-stress cookies to people who stressed from, out from Christmas. To bring Kill Your Zombie with the brand T-Shirt and the interactive branded short, we also organized an, alternate, an alternative recreational activity. Zombie fans had the possibility to take on a zombie obstacle course. The aim of the game was to give an authentic impression of the run from zombies. The participants were informed that they have been infected with a zombie virus. They got a G-Shock and the timer was set to five minutes. And, they had, and then they had to find the hidden attitude in the time allocated while avoiding the horrible zombies. We got great feedback. Players described the parkour as an exciting, thrilling experience. And Stuttgart's local newspaper described it as a mixture of the fear factor, brain teasers, and obstacle course. And a cutting edge experience you will not forget. Our next steps are the post production of the interactive branded short and the zombie parkour, and I think we will finish the project in the summer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonas. Now, uh, the next project you'll see, um, or the next presentation you'll see is about the project, uh, a game called Perfect Woman. You can actually, I've said it before, you can actually play the game on the marketplace um, don't miss it. It's uh, a game for all women and all other people. And welcome Marius and Lea, who will tell you a little bit about it. Hi. Hello. Um, this is Marius Winter. <laughs> okay. Oh. And this is Lea Schoenfelder. And she's the lead designer of Perfect Woman. And I did some animations for it, I don't know. But I will come back to you in the last slide. But for now, the trailer, I guess, right? Um, yes, we start with the trailer. There are also two other people in the audience, Annika Bauer and Benedikt Haas, who were involved in the project as well. And uh, Peter Lou, who is in Los Angeles, who is the co-author co of Perfect Woman. Um, yeah, to show you what the game is about, um, we will introduce it by a short trailer. She's athletic. She's got two happy children and a loving husband who's also interesting. Mary has an ambitious career but also found her inner peace. She's cultural and she has really good friends. Mary is never stressed out about anything. She's always happy. Long story short, Mary is perfect. And because we know that you want to be perfect too, let us present to you the Perfect Woman Life Simulator. Given your physical condition is excellent and you have supreme coordination abilities, you too can be the perfect woman. Using the Perfect Woman Simulator is easy. Position yourself in front of the Kinect so it can track and analyze your movements. 
match the required poses as well as you can. In the decision phase, it's your call. At age 60, you can choose between the minister, the fundraiser, an angry woman, and the senior call girl. You want to be the foreign minister, of course, but that's going to be extremely difficult. You might even think of going for an easier option. Call girl doesn't sound so bad after all. Well, what an attitude! We're here to be perfect, and you can do it. Yahoo! So choose the minister and accept the challenge. You will manage if only you try hard enough. The Perfect Woman Life Simulator uses a scientifically accurate algorithm to compute life difficulty. In the end, you will learn why some moments in your perfect life have been more difficult than others. While some people pledge for more openness towards diversity and different lifestyles, for you, only the best is ever good enough. And you know now that with the right amount of eagerness and ambition, that you too can be the perfect woman. Okay, so you know what the game is about, more or less. Uh, you can choose between all different kinds of women. Um, everybody you can see here, you can be a princess at age five or a terrorist at age 27, <clears throat> or you can be a drunk girl on Oktoberfest, or if you're very sad, you can also be a woman who lost her child to leuke leukemia. Um, yeah, the conflict in the game is that if you only want to be the good ones, so if you try to be perfect in your life, that's going to be really hard, and the performance you have to make is gonna stress you out. Um, I illustrated this by two examples here. For example, if you choose to be the perfect mother at age 27, um, yeah, that's a perfect choice which is suggested by us by the, uh, to us by the media for example, by advertising for detergent or children's chocolate, that you have to be a happy mother of two happy children at age 27. If you choose that, it's going to be extremely difficult to be the 34-year-old MIT professor at uh, seven years later, because obviously if you want to be a very ambitious career woman, you would uh, have been to university and worked very hard and spent a lot of time on your career and this is possible but pretty hard to combine it with a family. And this scene was inspired by a TED talk by Sheryl Sandberg who is COO at Facebook. Yeah, so uh, you probably get, got the message already. Perfect woman is against perfectionism and it's a uh, propaganda game for being mediocre. And that's what the game is about. You can try it out at the show floor. Uh, I guess one uh, stairs above. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, if you go to the ice cream thing, go to the right. So it's very close to that. It's the perfect place. Um, so yeah, the, the game is now uh, finished, but we, we um, had the, um, um, you know, uh, we sent it around a lot and uh, it uh, ran in different uh, festivals, which was pretty awesome, like the Amaze Indie Connect last year in uh, Berlin. Um, and, oh yeah, and this year it was at the Amaze, actually at the, um, it won a prize. Of I find uh, I can't find the right word for it. It was in a competition, yes, and it won the main prize at the maze. You can actually find and touch the prize uh, at our game. It, uh, uh, there's sending a small figure on it, and um, yeah, exactly. And it also was at the uh, Independent Games Festival (IGF) in San Francisco, uh, nominated for it. Um, and many more, actually. <laughs> like, there's so many of these uh, things, and now it's here, so it's, you should go play it here before it goes away again to another festival. <laughs> and that's actually it, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Um, by the way, uh, we take questions to all the speakers after the last presentation. If you have questions, memorize them and uh, ask them later. So please welcome now our next speaker, Oliver Witzki, who will present his diploma um, project, uh, Vibrations, an interactive installation in space. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. I'm Oliver Witzki, or just call me Oli. And um, next to games and um, campaigns, um, we can yeah, explore the field of interactive installations and the studies of interactive media. And I took care about vibrations for the last half year and made this as a diploma project. Um, who of you plays an instrument? So, so just give me a hands up. And who would like to play an instrument? So, some more. And um, vibrations is about the last question and the first question. Um, I don't play an instrument, I, but I had the feeling that I like to play an instrument to impress myself. And I always wanted to make an um, exhibition or installation about um, the oeuvre uh, of Pink Floyd. So Pink Floyd just creates worlds with sounds, no more. And um, I thought um, this, this could be funny and just great to do this um, by ourselves, just to create our visual and, um, yes, auditive world um, with our own hands and to share it with others. So this is why I came up with an interactive sound installation um, and I'm a quite technical guy, so I thought the approach to music to um, one who don't play music with an instrument could be through technology. So why just don't just move your hand and wave to make sounds and to make music? So this is why we used to connect in front of a, yes, I mean, quite a great screen, screen. and um, it's a single user experience. But on the other side of this screen, there's your audience. So you're some kind of um, protected. So if you're shy, that's not too bad. Just go behind the screen, stand in front of the connect, and just do your thing and explore your inner auditive world and share it.
Thank you. So if you got any questions left, um, I suggest to, to ask right now. I think I got a minute. Um, or just meet me in the next days here at FMX. So. Anyone right now? Um, if you're interested in studying, oh, someone? Sorry. That's correct. So it's captured by the Connect. Connect recognizes your skeleton, and we just track the hip to choose an instrument, and your hands to, to if it touches a point that makes a sound, and to just control the cutoff of the sound, and yes, some other parameters that are normal for electronic music. So um, if there are questions going deeper or in this kind of way, just ask me later, please. So, <laughs> the next are uh, Moby's Revenge from Marie Velasov and Patrick Ferling. I think Tina has something more to say about this, right? No? So, it's a quite game. Great, great projects. They'll tell everything themselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so Patrick and I made a game, it's called Moby's Revenge, and uh, Patrick did the coding, I did the art, and we did together the um, concept, and it's about a little whale who is um, captured in a sea life aquarium, and he's very sad and unhappy, so the user has to free him, and then um, he manages to escape into the ocean, and there he uh, meets Quido. Squido um, helps him to get revenge on the humans, or tells him how to get revenge on the humans. Um, yeah, and during Moby's escape, um, he can transform into three different whales, and that's the first transformation. He's a huge, golden, double-headed unicorn whale who can destroy everything and is immortal. And yeah, the next transformation, he becomes a purple little cute whale, and he has the behavior that he can collect the stuffages. He is like a magnet. And the last transformation, he becomes super angry, and now he's totally fast and immortal as well. And there's a short one-minute gameplay clip we'll show you. Yeah, so um, we were um, we put this game online in January, and we were really lucky because the App Store featured our game on the front page as best um, new game of the week, and um, also featured our game on the Facebook page, how you can see here, and um, we got uh, nearly 300,000 downloads in one month, in the first month. Um, yes, so you can download it too in the App Store if you like. <laughs> um, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, and all, do all uh, download the game in the App Store. Well, now we have time for questions both to the speakers or if you want to uh, know anything about uh, the interactive media 
program at Film Academy, I want to introduce uh, Professor Inga von Staden to you, who is the head of, um, the interact uh, head of the Interactive Media Studies program at Film Academy. So please feel free to either ask questions to the speakers and their projects, or to Inga on the, or the students, uh, uh, if you want to know anything about uh, the Interactive Media um, program studying transmedia games and much more at Film Academy. So, questions? No question. Oh, we need at least one. We need at least one. Doors are locked. Okay, then it's group picture time. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to, to remind you again, um, the application deadline for uh, studying for studying studying interactive media this year is the 5th of may very soon so, so. I'll ask back into the audience who's interested in creating games <laughs> <laughs> who's interested in transmedia projects okay so an answer from the public why are you sitting here <laughs> Anybody will? Yes? Um, I wanted to ask how long does it take the, the Transmedia and Games uh, courses or program? How many terms? We, we have, a, you can either study the whole program, which is uh, four and a half years, it's four years and a diploma a semester. Uh, that's uh, you do your basic studies in the film department so you actually learn how to make films and then you in the um, third year you come into the specialized studies program interactive media uh, it's two years uh, the first year is the the first or third year is uh, you do uh, do quite a few courses on uh, to specialize in interactive media and a lot of projects. In the fourth year, you do mainly projects and then you start entering your diploma phase. Uh, thank you. And another question about... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm told by my colleague I'm supposed to say it's for free. <laughs> no, this is actually very important uh, for people not from Germany. We are uh, a public um, institution, so there's no tuition fee. This is unlike uh, in most other countries where there's tuition fees for these programs. Excellent. Thank you. Because I was going to ask you about international students. Um, I work in Costa Rica, and I have some students in my school that would be interested maybe in, in coming here. So uh, are these um, dates of, uh, to get into the, uh, all the documents and everything? or? You can, um, we, we uh, encourage exchange programs. So, uh, for instance, Lea Schoenfelder was uh, for an exchange at UCLA. Um, we've also had um, a student from Canada who came here. We have about 60% of our program is in English. So if you do study with us, you need to have uh, proficiency in English. And... Uh, if you, we also at the film school now offer an international track, so you can actually take all the English-speaking courses at the school if you come for a semester as an exchange. Um, so you would be taking classes with us, with the Animation Institute, but you could also be taking classes with other departments. Of course, you can apply uh, for the study program uh, from anywhere in the world, but you do need a basic knowledge of German, which can be learned in Germany, of course. If you else. study the whole course, yeah. you need some basic knowledge of German. If you come for an exchange program, we organize the curriculum in a way that you do the English-speaking track. Any more questions? Sorry, I have to leave, and I just wanted to know, you are all in the marketplace uh, the next three days, so I can meet you all there, or, or just only today? 
No, 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 the whole until Friday evening. You can meet Leah and team, and uh, you uh, can also ask around, and uh, if you have specific questions, you can ask uh, to meet somebody else. Probably best either at Dislocate, which is on the gallery, or at um, Leah's um, installation, Perfect Woman. Okay, thank you. And one last question for the transmit interactive media. Can professionals apply to do... Um, Alternative, like uh, in, it's something that is going on in France. You can be a, you can work for a company and do a program, a professional program in. So it's a half -time. dual study program. Um, we're not quite there yet. No, at, at the moment, not. You can study with us. I think everyone here is working. Uh, alongside the studies program in order to finance their living. I don't know how they do it because <clears throat> the curriculum is very tough, but they all manage to work uh, apart from, from the program, but we don't have a dual, um, a dual studyship where you work in a company and you study on the side. It's something that one could possibly discuss. So if you're interested in it, you should come up to me and we can see if maybe there's ways we can do something about it. Okay, thank you. One more question. No? So if not, thank you very much, Inga. Thank you uh, to all of you for those great presentations. Um, if you're interested, uh, bear with us. There's another um, slot now coming up uh, where you can uh, see more Film Academy projects, this time by the very technical people, the technical directing students. And by the way, you can also, uh, the application deadline Uh, the, oh, the application is still open for the technical director studies as well until the 5th of May, if you are more techie. So thanks very much and hope to see you again in a couple of minutes.